When we first started the Geriatric Outreach Assessment Service project 12 months ago, we knew that it was quite an ambitious thing to, to do. Our funding pool was small and the time frames were quite short and we needed to be able to show how effective the service would be. The results have been outstanding and have exceeded our expectations and we've just um, completely exceeded every performance indicator that we set at the beginning. So through the course of many discussions with service providers, with general practitioners, staff from residential aged care facilities and the hospital and healthcare service, uh, talking to older people, uh, the Queensland Ambulance Service, looking at the data that we had available to us, we found that there were many residents that were being sent to hospital for acute illnesses because there wasn't a better alternative. And we also heard that people would actually rather have the care where they were than go to hospital. The success from beginning to end has been that collaborative approach. The important thing is the satisfaction through the feedback that we've received from everyone who's used the service. No project is ever successful unless the person who's involved in it, who's using it, feels satisfied that it has met their needs. The partnership with PHN, the discussions that went on with them, shows that collaboration in any field with the right-minded people is a recipe for success. It's really about bringing the hospital geriatrician specialist care into community, not having that be something special that people need to get into the car to go and seek out, but uh, a service that extends beyond those walls of the hospital. Uh, so it brings aged care, family, residents and hospital staff all together so we can work hand in hand to improve resident care uh, and at a person-centred level. The GOAS team has actually provided formal and informal education. So education happens in terms of when a registrar and a clinical nurse come out and talk um, with the residents, with the family, with the frontline staff about uh, what they're seeing and what interventions they would recommend. And, uh, and so informally, that happens on a day-to-day -day or in a week-to-week -week basis when they come out for consultations. So it's really empowered staff to go that extra mile in terms of what they can do within their own scope of practice. From a GP perspective, probably the right time is the critical problem and step, I guess, in this process. So everyone's very busy, obviously GPs are usually very busy, booked up, and unfortunately people get sick when we have the least time for it. So I think from our perspective, Having somebody who's able to provide their care at the right time is probably the most important thing in general practice. Probably also from our perspective has been the ability to have specialist input. So some of these residents are very complex, lots of medications, lots of problems. And sometimes as a GP you kind of feel a little bit left alone in that situation and, and the option is waiting for an outpatient appointment or something like that which is often not in a timely fashion so having the ability to have some specialist advice is invaluable I think and really supportive to the care that we provide. What we're trying to do is make sure that the frail older person receives the right care in the right place. Hospitals are not designed for the older person. By outreaching into their homes where they are living, we can provide the care in the familiar surrounding. This has a positive impact on their overall function and recovery.
Being in hospital for longer periods of time we know has a detrimental impact on patients, uh, on their outcomes. So we really wanted to look at how we can do things differently and, um, uh, and we knew that in the residential aged care sector that um, as that population really the, their needs have become more complex over time that that perhaps was where we could um, provide an input with the biggest impact. Um, traditionally we've really struggled to um, partner with um, primary care, um, the NGOs, and not because of uh, people not wanting to work together but just our systems are, are separate, they're funded differently, they work in parallel rather than supporting integration. Some of the issues uh, regarding funding are the silos of funding. We have both health and aged care systems that are quite complex and the funding is quite separate and has different drivers and different uh, reporting mechanisms and so the ability to um, pull that funding and to use it aimed at a particular population or needs or group of needs actually enables you to build a service that better meets the needs but also saves the system money. So, um, there was a lot of motivation to do this better and um, so we uh, embarked on really what was a relatively small pilot in the scheme of things but it's been incredibly successful and so now has a huge interest for us in terms of how can we roll this out more broadly across our whole um, health service um, and we're just about to do exactly that. So um, we've uh, launched Radar, which is um, centrally coordinated um, in Metro North, a one phone number, uh, and we'll then put you in touch with the outreach service, um, which may come from the Royal Brisbane, Prince Charles, Redcliffe or Caboolture. Um, but all of those services will be uh, working as a team across the whole district. One of the important things in undertaking these type of projects is that we don't fall into that silo thinking of a discrete project that will hopefully continue but it needs to be part of a broader strategy and so for instance in working with our hospital and health service and, and the primary health network in our region we've created a five-year strategic plan for older people and the issues that are identified in there are what these discrete projects should be targeting so that it's part of a broader strategy and it's a joined up approach that has um, specific goals in mind but also improves the ability of the whole system to respond in a more integrated way. I think from here on it's building on this success. We still have a lot more to achieve in terms of bringing the person-centred care all in one place under one roof but at least this collaboration between the primary health networks and Metro North HHS and I think with that in mind we're looking to exciting times in the future where collaboration will bring better outcomes.